Confession is good for the soul, right? Well, I have a confession to make. I don't like wine. That may not seem like much of a confession to you, but it does make me feel more than a little insecure because I have a lot of friends and family who love wine, and a lot of admirable people throughout history have extolled the virtues of wine. However, even though I've learned to like some things, tomatoes, capers, having my teeth cleaned, I finally decided to draw the line at wine. I don't care whether it's white, red, or ripple. I just don't like it. It makes me feel uncomfortable when drink orders are going around the table and there's one Chardonnay, one Merlot, one Shiraz, one Sauvignon Blanc, and when it comes to me and I say, Hey, have you got anything in the way of a micro-brewed stout? The server looks at me as though I just asked for wild Irish rose. At least in most of the restaurants I go to, I don't have to worry about some sommelier with a toothpick-sized mustache who walks as though he's holding a dime with his glutes, glaring at me, trying to decide whether he should have the local constabulary evacuate me from the premises. But the looks I get from fellow diners make me feel just as low. I can't even go to wine and cheese parties, which is hard because I've never met a cheese I didn't like. People can turn down cheese by saying they're lactose intolerant, but the reaction I get when I turn down a glass of Pinot Noir by saying I'm Vita CI intolerant is that the stilton is off limits too. Even though the world has changed and societies have become more egalitarian, some wine drinkers, and you know who you are, see the world of alcoholic beverage consumers split into two types, those who drink wine and those who eat things they fish out of the sewer. Historically speaking, this is understandable. Beer was the first alcoholic beverage. It was invented by the Sumerians, who invented a lot of things, possibly with the help of beer. They invented beer when someone let some yeasty bread and some sugar and some water sit in a jar for a week, and somebody else came along and, for reasons we'll never quite understand, but for which we're eternally grateful, decided to drink it. Their beer, of course, was thick and crude, and you could stand a fork up in it. In fact, they invented forks just for this purpose, until around 2800 B.C. when someone realized you could also eat with them. Beer was easy to make. It was everybody's drink. Wine, on the other hand, is harder to make. It requires putting a ton of grapes in a giant barrel and having Lucy and Ethel dance in it in their bare feet. Here's something to consider, though. The Egyptians drank beer, and look at what they accomplished. They invented paper and built the pyramids. The Romans, on the other hand, preferred wine. There's not even a word for beer in Latin. And they never invented anything, but spent all their time conquering and pillaging every place they could reach. They were finally beaten back in Scotland, where, as you may notice, beer is pretty popular. But everyone admired the Romans for their ability to sow a path of destruction across the Western world. So wine became the preferred drink. It's still the choice of fancy restaurants and dinner parties. And wine increases in value the longer it's kept around. While no one keeps cellars full of beer, or, if they do, they drink it up pretty quickly. Wine has the air of sophistication that only a beverage that's made by barefoot people dancing on grapes can have. So wine, naturally, is the choice of anyone who wants to look intelligent. This is why even people who completely abstain from alcohol drink sparkling fruit juice to fit in with the crowd. The Romans said, in vino veritas, which means, there's truth in them there wines. In beer, then, it's assumed that there's malt, hops, and a whole lot of, I love you guys. Wine will get you drunk, but at least it makes you look like an intelligent drunk, while beer, supposedly, leads to riots, fart jokes, and the hanging bellies of Babylon. With that reputation, it's no wonder people look down on beer drinkers. We beer swillers aren't even good enough to be considered the dregs of hum humanity, since you only find dregs at the bottom of wine barrels. We're at the sub-dreg level but I'm not sure it's a reputation we deserve. I've decided we beer drinkers are not going to take this lying down, even if we're too drunk to stand up straight. A preference for wine may seem like the one thing that separates you from the chimpanzees, or maybe you're just afraid of looking stupid in front of that guy who always wears turtlenecks and blazers to your dinner parties. Okay, maybe you really like wine, and you don't just drink it because it, you, think, you think it makes you look smart. Have you considered that maybe some beer drinkers also drink beer because we like it? In case you haven't noticed, microbrews and fancy imports from countries that have more respect for beer than the Romans did are on the rise. Believe me, not all beer drinkers are content to swill cases of some mass-produced brew that, in both look and taste, is almost but not quite completely undistinguishable from chilled goat urine. 
The next time you're in a liquor store or passing through the beer section of your local grocery, look at the price tags on those six packs of Cherokee Mocha Lager or those draft cans of Vicks Double Pumpkin Autumn Harvest Super Dry Bock. Fancy brews are not only tasty, they're at least as expensive as that bottle of Grenache you feel so proud of yourself for sipping on Friday evening. And we beer drinkers could, if we chose, be beer snobs. We could take tiny sips of beer, spit them out into silver buckets, and say, Yes, that's a sardonic little Marzen. We don't for two reasons. The first is, beer is tasty, and no one in their right mind would spit it out. This is why beer doesn't sit in dark cellars for years. Life's too short to wait to see if 1993 was a good year for Bohemian Pilsner. The second is, no matter who you are, you should be slapped if you describe any beverage as sardonic. But we beer drinkers could be snobs if we wanted to. Who knows? Beer snobs may soon appear in restaurants everywhere. You might be sipping your Peruvian Riesling somewhere and overhear a sommelier telling another patron, This one is made with the waters of the Rocky Mountains. With the rise of microbrews, beer drinkers could potentially take over the world. Wine drinkers, take this as a warning. Exclude beer drinkers from your homes, your restaurants, and your dinner parties at your own peril. When the local constabulary comes for you because you turned down a perfectly good pint of foaming ale in favor of a tiny glass of alcoholic grape juice, who will speak up for you? I'm not saying it will happen. Okay, I'm not even saying it could happen. There may never be beer snobs, and even if there are, we'll never run the world. But you can't repress a group of people forever, no matter what they drink. We beer drinkers have been forced to sit at the bar for too long, and you might be unpleasantly surprised to find how mean we can be when sober.